This is a video about GNU Parallel and the basic uses of that. GNU Parallel is a tool for parallelizing shell script. I'm Ole Tange, I'm the author of GNU Parallel. To start using GNU Parallel, you will first have to get it. You will get that from GNU's website, and you will download it, then you will extract it, and then you will do configure and make. And when that finishes, you have to become root to install it. And when you're done, then you're actually ready to start with your first parallel jobs. So here I have some log files. I have around one gigabyte of them. Let's just see how long it takes to run gzip on that. So I use gzip minus one, so we won't have to wait that long. This will compress all the files in the directory, and most of the time will be spent uh, processing the files um, and reading it into to memory. Um, here. We can see that we used 86% of the CPU while doing this. Uh, and it took around 20 seconds. When we unzip them, we can assume that the disk might be the limiting factor. So we will probably see it's gonna take more or less the same time, but with a less percentage of CPU. Exactly, right? So more or less the same time, but a lesser percentage of the CPU. Now, let's try to do that in parallel. So we take the files again, we put them into parallel, which will then spawn gzips, several gzips in parallel, and will then compress them. And now suddenly it only takes 10 seconds with a usage of uh, almost 200% CPU. This makes sense because this is a dual core CPU. Now if we decompress them using parallel, um, we will expect to see more or less the same time as up here. And the reason is that uh, the limiting factor now is writing to the disk. So that's more or less 20 seconds. Now let's try something else. Let's try to recompress these gzip files to bz2. So let's just gzip them. Uh, so we have some gzip files to, to work on. And then let's um, uh, train, then let's recompress this file to bz2. We do this by doing the following. So this will list all the gz files, and we pipe that into parallel. Uh, minus j plus zero means run as many jobs in parallel as there are CPU cores. The plus zero means add zero jobs to that. So if you have two CPU cores, you will run two jobs in parallel. ETA means give us some output information so we can see how long this is gonna take more or less. This is the script that's being run on every single file. So the file name will be put in here. So we will do setcat on the file name. Then we will pipe it through the bzip2 and we're gonna compress that as uh, with the best compression. And then we're gonna put it into a file name that's called the same as the original file except that the dot gz is removed. So this will remove the .gz and it'll add bz2. Here we can see the list of computers that's involved. Currently we only have one computer, our local computer, and we can see that it has two CPU cores and because of the plus zero up here, it'll only run two jobs in parallel. Here we have a list of uh, the current situation, so we can see the computer, which is the local one, the number of jobs it's running, it's running two jobs, and the number of completed jobs is 44 jobs, and percent of started jobs means which percentage of the jobs that has been started has been started on this machine. And since we're only using one machine, obviously that'll be 100%. This is the average uh, number of seconds to complete, so we can see every single bzip of these files takes around two seconds to complete. 
Um, this estimation, uh, estimate is the number of seconds until it completes. It's usually a rough guess and it depends a lot on the kind of jobs that you're running. So only take this as a, a very loose guess. Um, it's not very accurate. Now this is getting kind of boring, so let's just fast forward. So, now it finished, and we can see we used almost 200% of the CPUs and it took three and a half minutes. Now, let's try to do that uh, using several computers. So we'll try to do the same job, we'll recompress to set 2 but we're going to use not only the local machines, we're also going to use four other machines to help us out. So, here, what we do here is we take the GSAP files, we pipe it into parallel, and we, uh, ETA will give us the output information, and now we will tell them to use so 1234 and colon, colon means the local host. This will transfer the file, the GSET files to the remote machine. Then we will run this script. And when that script is run, we will copy that file back from the remote machine. And after that is done, we'll remove the two files from the remote machines. Uh, so uh, they, that will be cleaned up and there will be no files on the remote machine. We can see here we have five computers involved in the com uh, compression and they have different numbers of CPU cores and thus they have different numbers of jobs to run in parallel. Here we can see that um, the different computers, what their status is, that's more or less the same I explained before, that, that we can see here this computer has completed 11% of the jobs, this has completed 37% of the jobs, this has completed 41% of the jobs, and this, this is apparently a very slow computer because it's only completed 1% of the jobs. This one is a medium speed computer and we can see that also with the average time it's spent. Now, uh, let's try to do more or less the same, but we can see this is very slow and it might actually slow us down since we're using 38 seconds. This, that 38 seconds might actually be caused by this because it's two times this number here. So it might actually be faster to leave this one out. So let's try that. We will also make an, another small change. We will do this using a script and you can imagine that this script is way more complex. Um, so we have the script here, it's called recompress. And just to let you know, that's basically the same thing as we just did uh, before it's now just put into a script, but you could make your own much more elaborate script and make more advanced features. So this is the command line we're going to do. Um, so again, here we have removed the server three, as you can see. Um, the other new thing is TRC, which means transfer, return, cleanup. And it'll do the same as the transfer, return, cleanup, but it's much shorter to write and it'll do the same for this style file. We also have a base file. The base file is a file that will be transferred to the remote machines. Uh, it will only be transferred once. And because there is a cleanup, the C over here, it'll be removed when all the jobs are done. Uh, it can be used for transferring scripts to remote machines, or it can be used to transfer data that's being used by the script. You can have multiple base files. You just add dash dash base file and then the name of the file. And this is the command we're going to run with the two arguments. And let's just see here, where we actually did manage to go faster. We still have around 40 seconds. So it didn't make a difference this time. 